Right now, a student from Westside High School fighting for his life after he was shot in the chest while walking to his bus stop this morning. Hello, everyone. I'm Jennifer Waugh. Family members now tell us the shooting happened on Miss Muffet Lane South and Lane Avenue around 615. Police say a black car pulled up to the 17 year old and someone started shooting. The wounded teen managed to run to a school bus, boarded and begged the driver for help. That driver then drove about a block to the nearest fire station on Tiny Tim Lane, where paramedics were able to rush him to the hospital. As the search continues for the shooter, we have several reporters covering this developing story. We begin, though, with News for Jack's reporter Ashley Harding, who's live outside Westside High School. Ashley, you spoke to a mom whose child was actually on the bus with this 17-year-old. Yes, I did, Jen, and that lady says she got a phone call from the school letting her know her 14 year old son was all right, but she says all she could think about doing was getting here to Westside High School and seeing for herself that he was OK. And thankfully he was. And you can see things look fairly normal here at Westside High School, but we have seen several school district police officers here on scene. We know that mother was not alone, though, and we have seen several parents arrive here on campus coming to take their children home after hearing this news. But this mother I spoke with this morning says she was relieved and decided she was going to take her son home. She tells me she is horrified that he had to see something like this happened. Here's what she told me. And when I knew he was here, I was on my way. It's just to me, I just don't feel like his mind is going to be on work after seeing a child bleeding like that. So I, I hope he make it, you know, through. But it's a sad thing for these students to have to go through right now. And I also spoke to a young man who says he knows that, that student who was shot. He says he got that news. He was upset just like anybody else. Here's how he described his classmate who is now fighting to stay alive. He was a cool person. I talked to him like every now and then in the hallways, and he was never in no trouble. So I was like really lost when I, I, didn't, I was confused because I didn't know that actually happened. And that crisis team is expected to stay here at Westside High School throughout the day, working with those students and staff. Reaction is continuing to pour in about this, and we're continuing to, of course, learn more details. We will keep you updated when that information is available. Live at Westside High School, Ashley Harding, Channel 4, The Local Station. News for Jack's reporter Jennifer Reddy is live outside Fire Station 22, where the teen was taken. Jennifer, you spoke to a witness. That's right, I did. And to give you some perspective, this fire station here is just about a mile away from the bus stop where the 17 year old was walking to when the black car drove by and someone inside shot him. He then got on the bus, as you mentioned, and that bus driver acted very quickly, bringing him here to the fire station where he was then taken to the hospital with life threatening injuries. This is video of the scene here. Earlier this morning, the bus was still here along with several JSO officers and detectives on the scene. They did interview several students who were on the bus. A Duval County School Board member tells us when two students were being interviewed by officers, one of the students tried to take an officer's taser. That student was tased and taken to the hospital to be checked out. We did ask JSO about the incident, but they did not elaborate. I spoke with a man here this morning who was dropped off here as this was all unfolding, and he says the violence in this community is out of control and something needs to change. Tired of it every morning. The same thing, basic. Kids with guns. Somebody need to do something about it. School board, city council, the streets, the mayor, somebody, because it's getting out of hand. It's not no uh, racial thing, it's not no cult. It's just young kids out of control with guns. JSO says the quick thinking of the bus driver to bring him here to the fire station likely saved his life. As for a suspect at this time, JSO does not have any description. Jennifer Reddy, Channel 4, The Local Station. Thank you, Jen. And as Jen just mentioned, a student was tased on the bus after that confrontation with a police officer. News for Jack's reporter Vic Michalucci just spoke with the mother of that student. Vic's joining us now live. Vic, we're told that this happened because this student grabbed the officer's taser. 
Yeah, that's the statement from the police that they gave us a couple of hours ago this morning. The mother has a very different take on this situation. She says that her son was just in pain. He was reacting and he was not trying to hurt the police officer. She is very frustrated, very upset about what happened to her son. We're going to show you that video in just a little bit. I do have cell phone video showing what happened. Want to give you a scene setter, though. We are on Miss Muffet Lane. That is where we believe this shooting took place. That's information coming from neighbors as well as potential witnesses. It is also where the teenager lived with his father, the teen who was shot, and multiple stories coming from this area. This is the same street where the teenager who was tased this morning lived. So want to show you that video now. This is cell phone video from a student. This is outside of the fire station where the injured teen was taken. Uh, police hey, uh, tried hey, to talk to some of these witnesses, career. these students on the buses, and you can hear students not happy about what was going on. So what you're hearing there is they're saying you don't need to tase him. This doesn't need to happen. You can also hear that teenager screaming. Now, as I said, I spoke with the mother who says she does not think police should have questioned her son and definitely doesn't think that they should have done this to him. They had no business tasing him. He is a minor. They shouldn't have been asking him nothing about nothing without a parent around, period. He shouldn't have put his hands on my child. My child should not have been tased. I have videos where everybody's yelling, and even my son says, I already gave y'all my name. Why are y'all doing this? And then you can hear him being tased again on the video. By the way, that mother said that her son's name is Wade Jenkins Jr. He's 15 years old. He goes to Westside High School. She says he doesn't cause any problems. So she tells me that his heart was racing so much that they did take him to Baptist Hospital as a precaution. He was treated there. He was released and then taken to the juvenile detention facility. She hopes that he will be released this afternoon. She also thinks that all charges will be dropped or actually that he will not be charged in this case. That's what she understands from talking to police. She once again very upset with what happened and says this situation as a whole is a mess because there is way too much crime and violence all around her family. We're live on the West Side. I'm Vic Michelucci, Channel 4, the local station. Vic, I know all of this is still very fluid. Just wanted to follow up with you on two points. First of all, do we know if this was JSO involved in tasing this uh, student or was it school board police? First question. And then second, uh, do, do we have any confirmation from law enforcement as to whether or not this boy did, in fact, according to them, grab the officer's taser before this occurred? Okay, let's start with, do we know if it was JSO? We got the briefing from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. We do believe it was a JSO officer. Cannot tell you that information for sure just yet, but we don't think that it was a school board police officer. And Jen, that video is very dark. It's kind of grainy. It's been passed along from phone to phone before it got to mine. So we're still working to confirm that. As far as do we have confirmation that this uh, young man, the 15-year-old Wade Jenkins, tried to actually grab the officer's taser, that's what we got from police. That was the information we got in the morning briefing. Uh, still waiting to exactly find out what happened there. We'll know those details when they release the police report. That CCR number should be able to give us uh, more details about what the officers have to say. But once again, uh, there is a discrepancy between uh, what the police officers on the scene told us and what the mother told us after talking with her son. Vic Michelucci joining us live. Thank you, Vic. School board member Scott Shine says today's shooting makes him sick to his stomach, and he's had enough of the gun violence here in Jacksonville. By and large, I mean, we're doing everything we can. Um, but I, I got to say this. It's not government. It's not the school district. It's not law enforcement that can stop this. The citizen has to stop it. The parents. Um, and we are seeing, and it's interesting, the people who are really giving us the most information about violence, gun violence and guns in schools and around schools are the kids. It is so frustrating for so many people. And again, we want to point out that we do not know if the person who shot this teen is an adult or is a teenager, hoping to learn more, certainly, as police search for that driver. We also spoke to City Council Member Terrence Freeman this morning, who represents the area where the shooting happened. He says his heart goes out to the students on that bus. Once again, um, we have kids in our community that um, are experiencing these tragic events and, and having to process it and try to deal with it on their own. 
Well, Freeman also added that JSO, police, the, the city, and the community leaders are working to try to come up with solutions that will make Jacksonville safe for everyone. Right now, our coverage, of course, continues of the shooting on newsforjax.com. We are updating the story on the home page with any new developments that continue to filter into our newsroom when we are not on the air. And anything new that happens in the next 30 minutes, we'll certainly bring it to you at once here on air.